Here on Outside Extra and over on Outside Xbox, you will often hear us poking fun at hero of Assassin's Creed 3, Connor. If you know us, you'll know that Connor is our favorite ever assassin. <laughs> no, sorry, I can't, uh, can't, couldn't keep a straight face. Whew. Yes, poking fun. But in truth, Connor isn't actually all that bad and we don't completely hate him, or at least I don't. But what is it about him that made some players unable to connect with him when really he was fine? I've invited another fan of the Assassin's Creed series, Eurogamer's Tom Phillips, to discuss with me why Connor isn't everyone's cup of tea and why he really should be. Thank you for joining me on the purple sofa of Oxford. Yeah, it's so different to the green sofa. Yeah, completely of different sofa. Oxbox and the mm -hmm. blue sofa of Eurogamer. Also a completely different sofa. Cool. But you are here with me to chat about Connor from Assassin's Creed 3. God, isn't he the worst? See, th th we're trying to no? say about how he's actually fine and it's not really like his fault. I feel sorry for him in a way because he. If you were in this situation, you wouldn't be the cheeriest of chappies either. No, no. And he comes after Ezio, one of the best characters in video games, full stop. Yeah, exactly. And that's point number one. So, how did I do? I've seen better. Ah, you wound me with your cruel, cruel words. All right, smarjasso. So yeah, point one, he came after Ezio. My He's favorite assassin. Ezio Auditore. I told him I'd fluff that, didn't I? <laughs> Ezio Auditore. Ezio Auditore. Yes. Da Firenze. Da Firenze. Now you need that, that's the important bit on the end as well. And he was such a like I can't fun even pronounce character. Connor's name. No. Well the thing is in Assassin's Creed 3, they're like, oh, this is his Native American name. Now here's the actual name that you'll use. Who are you? My name is Rado Hangado. Right. Well, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. It's yeah. used in a very interesting way. They're like, it's better for them to think that you're Spanish than a Native American because then they'll exactly. treat you nicer. It's good in-law very... explanation for why we're just going to say your name's Connor. Yeah. We're just going to call you Connor. <laughs> Everyone's going to say Connor and not your Native American name. Better to be thought a Spaniard than a Native. And both are better still than I. That is not true. What's true and what is aren't always the same. What would you call me then? Connor. Yes, that will be your name. I like that they did it. Yeah. I like that they have the actual Native American language in there. Yeah, it's actually. But uh, for all intents and purposes, he's Connor. Yeah. He's not got the same level as of charisma as Ezio, I don't think. No, I mean, when you're in that situation, when you've sort of been abandoned, your mum's dead, and uh, your father doesn't even know you exist. Yeah. You're not gonna have a great life. No. You've got a war going on around you, the British are assholes, the Americans are assholes. It's, it's, it's not, it's not like, yeah, I'm gonna run around Italy for a bit and... No, I'm gonna climb some rooftops and romance yeah. some ladies. Yeah. No, Ezio had it good. On a, yeah, a lot yeah. worse. Ezio is is one of my favourites. It's you know also the the game that spawned the classic kind of Assassin's Creed music of Ezio's family, which mm -hmm. is now synonymous with that game. So you hear that music, you're like, oh, that's an Assassin's Creed game. But they now, yeah, and they've now used it for the whole, the whole series, franchise because much. they are all Ezio's family. Yeah. If you think about it. Yeah. Ezio is just, yeah, he's the, the heart and soul, even more even more so than Altair, I'd say. Even though yeah, Altair Ezio, is like the original, but Ezio had three games and... I think for fans, he's the one that is eponymous with the series. Like, yeah. you just think of Assassin's Creed and you think, of Ezio games. He he kind of synonymized everything that a good Assassin's Creed protagonist should be. Mm -hmm. He has a real sense of character. He's funny, yeah. which Connor, I'm sorry, just isn't. No. He's charismatic, he's like a leader, and Connor never really gets to be any of those things. No. He never gets to have a funny, to happy that. life. No. Or a big, strong brotherhood behind him. No, he's in the shadow of Ezio, but that's not the only shadow that he's in. Good link. Mm-hmm. Invitation, please. Shall I take your coat, sir? His dad, Haytham Kenway, you start the game as him. This is incredible. I, this is one of the best openings to any video game because it's so it completely good. confuses you as to what's going on. Yeah. So even Ubisoft's own marketing people were not told about the opening to this oh. game. <laughs> 
so the game starts and it's about a five hour prologue yeah, where you play funny. as Haytham Kenway. You start off in a theatre in England yeah. and you're this old dude and you're like, this isn't America. This isn't the guy on the cover of the box. And suddenly you're playing this long prologue where it shows how the franchise is moving from Europe, Europe to, America. to America. And they didn't brilliant. tell anyone at Ubisoft about it because no. they wanted to keep it a big surprise. Yeah, it's a brilliant opening. And I was like, this is great. But it meant that I spent all that time bonding with Haytham. Yeah. <laughs> and then when it got to Connor, I was like, oh. A word, please, Mr. Kenway. Oh, I nearly forgot. There's your knife back. And at the end of the Haytham bit, there's that plot twist. Yeah. Which, you know. A... Don't say it! He's... I won't say yeah. it. Yeah. You are a Templar. May the Father of Understanding guide us. May the, May the Father, Father of Understanding, of understanding, guide, understanding us. guide us. But anyway. <laughs> And you feel that sense of betrayal, yeah. like, oh my God, I spent all this time with you and now it turns out that you're a thing. And then it, you have to start all over again with this fresh character. And then they introduce him as a kid yeah. as well. You do that, that, that lovely tutorializing thing where it's like, here's a kid, here's how you sneak. You're playing hide and seek with your friends. Hide in a bush. And you're like, oh, yeah. I know how here's, to do this. Here's just how to climb a tree. Yeah. Here's how to shoot a bow and arrow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's... also kids are annoying. Yeah. <laughs> He's like the Wesley Crusher of Assassin's Creed protagonist. <laughs> Aw, poor Wesley. <laughs> and also I remember um, Alex Hutchinson, the director, saying that they'd sold more Haytham action figures than Connor ones, which I think says it all. His dad should have been on the cover of the box. Oh, but then people would have been disappointed. When, like, we, people would have disliked Connor even more because he replaced the cool guy on the box. This is true. I can kill you now, if you prefer. Excellent. Imagine if you, as Alex Hutchinson has said, uh, were playing as Haytham as flashback sequences throughout the game. <gasps> they would break up the Connor mundanity. Yeah. Is that a word? Yeah. Mundanity? I'm using or it. Mundanity? I don't know. You know what I mean. The Connorness. The Connorness, yeah. That's now a word. Uh, with these uh, <laughs> missions where you played as Haytham, it would make it so much better. And then they'd sell even more action figures. Yeah. First, we make our way to Nathaniel Bradley's house to fetch the rest of our little group. Then it's on to Griffin's Wharf, where we board the ships and dump the tea. Simple as that. Simple seems a bit charitable. Cheer up, Connor. For tonight, we are all victors. The other problem that people had with him is that he's a little bit serious, a little bit too stoic. Just a little. We've spoken about how, like, Ezio was like, a but... He's not really. <laughs> no, Connor is not. He's more like, <sighs> and just silently annoyed the whole time through. Yeah. Which, as we said, you can understand. Yeah. But at the same time, it feels like a bit of a wasted opportunity. You have a rare glimpse into the life of, you know, someone you don't usually get to see in video games. No, no. You don't usually get to see a half Native American historical protagonist living no. through a time where, like, his peoples were being wiped out, Americans and British were just both being dicks. Still, there was this great opportunity to have an interesting character, and mm -hmm. I feel like his main personality trait throughout this game is just quietly annoyed. Yeah. Which doesn't make for a great no. video it's game. It's very relatable. Personality. But it's not, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to fully connect more than that. Of like, yeah, I feel you. This is all horrible to be it going sucks, to. It sucks, man. But, like, it sucks. When it, but also, like, I'm playing this video game 
to have fun. Yeah. And I'm like, when am I going to do the things that Ezio yeah. was fun with? I want to do the eagle diving things. and the, the stabby stabby. And <laughs> yeah. Like... I get that you wouldn't want to inaccurately portray someone and make them into something that they never could have been. Yeah, exactly. And you know, like, he probably wouldn't have been an Ezio type of no, character. He wasn't not. having a great time. We keep saying this, but it's very true. At the same time, you're making a video game that's supposed yeah. to be for entertainment, not like a history book of yeah. how bad this dude's life would have been. Well, the thing is, I think they have since done a really good job with that with Bayek. Yeah. In that he's, uh, you know, there's not many people who are from North Africa who are main protagonists in video games. I think and... the list of uh, ancient Egyptian Medjai people who are dying out yeah. <laughs> is, in video games is pretty pretty small. I think he's yeah. right at the top. I would yeah, I'd yeah, put him yeah, right yeah, at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes through some very horrible things, but he's still able to be like, you know, smile and have a joke and there's just a tiny bit of levity in there. Not... Bayek feels a much more well-rounded character. Well-rounded, yeah, because I, I don't think it's that Connor shouldn't be sad, like we keep saying, he has every right. But yeah, it's one dimensional. I wish that the story had given him more to do yeah. other than weep for his mother, weep for his tribe leader, weep yeah. for his entire tribe, then meet his dad, have a really awful time with his dad. Actually, some of the nicest stuff in the game is when they get along. It's almost like that Walter White kind of like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be hanging around with this guy. He's not great. No, he's not and good yet, for you. <laughs> you really want them to get along. You want them to be mates. Oh. Yeah. And you're like, oh, come on. But then it can't work out. Bonding and, and then he kills his dad so yeah. sad again yeah. also he seemed a little bit cooler in the adverts oh when he's like running through he's the like, battlefield <sighs> And you're just like, yeah, you look badass. And it, like, I don't mind, like, kind of a, oh, I'm moody, but also, like, I'm powerful and I know what I'm doing. But when you play the game, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's pretty clueless. He's just like, I'll see if this works. That's basically what he does. I'm just going to stab some people and maybe that'll make things maybe, better. Maybe this will change things. But that comes on to our next point. He claimed it was a scare tactic, that we might avoid war. A poor lie. I will find church for you. Why? What reason have you to help? Does it matter? As you wish. So one of the problems with Connor is it doesn't... Another one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not his fault. And like this is probably one of the reasons why people are like, ah, sometimes, is that he doesn't know what side he's on. No. So Ezio, some things happened, bad, all right, all right, these are the bad people, I'll deal with the bad people. And you kind of, he had a direction that he was going in, that was his motivation, go. Connor is just like ping-ponged all over the place. Yeah. And doesn't really know what to do. He's like, oh, okay, I'll go to this guy, he'll teach me how to be an assassin. That will answer my question. This has not answered my question, okay, I have to go and murder this person, okay. And he's kind of like sent on missions a bit more rather than and dealing with it himself and working it out himself. What is it? A request for aid from Paul Revere. Seems the Redcoats are up to something in Boston. Guess you made an impression on the Sons of Liberty. They mistake me for one of their own. Please tell Mr. Revere he has my sympathies, but I cannot help at present. You might wish to reconsider. John Pitcairn is mentioned by name. Where am I to go? Mr. Revere's house in Boston. If you'd like, I can... Yeah, I think he's torn between the two sides. Neither one is very good for him. Sometimes one seems to be better for him than the other, but overall, both are bad. Yeah. And because of that, he never really doesn't make any progress with one side or the other, like resolving things. Yeah. He's stuck in this conflict with which there is no resolution or no resolution that he can be an active part in. Like history does not record Connor Kenway <laughs> as the person who solved the, uh, the American-British War. He's this person who views events but never takes an active role in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it, he's just like Washington just sends him off on loads of little missions. Yeah. He's just like, he's like, okay, is this gonna help? I'll, all right, I'll try it. <laughs> I think this is best summarized in the whole thing of like, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? What would you have me do? Or what would you have me do? 
He doesn't know. He doesn't know. What would you what do you want me to do? Okay. Sometimes you relate to that. Again, he's a very relatable character. But I don't play games to play people who have all of my flaws. <laughs> and why should I give you any credit? Then don't. But uh, first, return the robe and the blade and the, and the darts and all of the years of training and knowledge I have bestowed upon you. Return these and then your words may have some merit. So, just quietly angry the whole time. I yeah, mean, I was yeah, going to say, exactly, there yeah. are some similarities it's there. Just... <laughs> Gunner! We saved the last one for you. Thing, mentioning uh, Washington earlier is that he just like appears in all of these like he's at yeah. the signing of the Declaration of Independence he's I at think. quite a few places he's there where Charles Lee dies yeah he's there at all of the big battles yeah all of the big battles there's a bit where you're like shooting cannons and you have to tell them where to it's just like, okay, so he was a decisive part in the, this civil, is some in the Revolutionary real, War, what? <laughs> yeah, some real historical retconning on mm. Ubisoft's part, yeah. which wasn't really the case in any of the previous games, no. which sort of just played out in, I don't know, maybe maybe this is a period of history which is just better recorded than yeah. the Ezio era. Yeah, I think that's Certainly the than the Bayek and sort yeah. of Assassin's Creed Odyssey era, and they felt like they needed to hit all of these memorable things that their audience would yeah, all Remember the from their American history classes. Have done in their history classes, yeah. Which, to be honest, I studied American history. Yeah. As my degree, it can be quite boring. <laughs> <laughs> And these wars go on for such a long time. Yeah. So this game sort of condenses a lot of things down, but yeah. then still has this person who just pops up all like the way every through. Every single one. Like Doctor Who, which has been yeah. going on for like 50, <laughs> 60 years by this point. And they've hit pretty much every single major historical yeah. event where they do Doctor Who just goes and yeah. appears. Like he was at Pompeii and yeah. he was at the sinking of the Titanic. It's a bit implausible. But Connor is an actual person. <laughs> yeah, like. the, doctor get, the doctor gets out of it because he's an he's alien. An alien. Uh, Connor is supposed to be a regular dude. Yeah. And to be honest, he probably just gets shot because he's just a guy and people didn't have a very long life expectancy back yeah. then, especially in the middle especially of a war. Especially in the war, yeah. He just happened to be all the important beats, whereas Ezio was more about building up a brotherhood in the shadows mm -hmm. that no one really kind of knows is, is there and just like quietly influences history. We work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins. Where he's like, yes. Connor is like, hey. He's, he's, on the, he's literally on the front lines. Yeah. Except for the bit where they ask you to go around the battle instead oh, of through it. I was so disappointed. I was expecting to be like, okay, so you go through, fight a bit, go through, fight a bit, and they're like, go around. <laughs> And also, field. it's an assassination game. It's yeah. You shouldn't be on the front lines no. of a big battle no. with a hundred other people. It's assassins, it's like working in the shadows. That's the whole point of assassin yes. games. Yeah, but talking about the whole point of assassin games. Gameplay is a huge part of, I think, what defines a character that a lot of people don't realise. They think it's all in the writing and the story, but it's also how that person physically acts is a huge part of what they are. Yeah, how I can express myself as that character, what abilities I'm able to do, yeah. and how I interact with other people. People are like, love Doom Guy, he's great. He doesn't say two words, but you know that he has a personality, and mm. you're like, I like him, even though he doesn't say a single thing. Connor didn't have the best shot with that, with the world no. that he was in, because he was a little bit flat. He was flat, just like the world. Yeah. This is like the first game that really opened up into like large, wide landscapes. Yeah. I remember them announcing it and thinking, okay, so you're doing revolutionary America. Okay, well, you've gone from Europe. Europe buildings have been around hundreds of years. Really quite tall yeah, towers. very tall. Quite fun to jump off. Ah! That's yeah. quite a big part Eagle of it. Eagle diving is a huge part of the series for fans. Huh? For and me, anyway. Assassin's 
three is more like where you can climb some trees. Um, some two-story houses. Yes. Um, church spires. You're lucky if you find a church. A about three or four story yeah. wooden church. Yeah, wooden church. In the middle of Boston. Yeah. And that's another thing, it gives you Boston and New York to go around, but not the Boston and New York that you know. No. Whereas not Spider Man. Rome. <laughs> you look around Rome, you're like, oh, Colosseum, yeah. there it is. All the other places. Clearly, I know loads about Rome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the aqueducts. <laughs> Thank you. Whereas New York and Boston, they're not the New York and Boston, no. you know. There's nothing there that you know. Everything got demolished and then rebuilt. I, love, I think they made a point that it was historically accurate to how it would have been back in the day. Yeah, and I mean. Which none of us would know I, one way I or the other. Them because like I've seen the Assassin's Creed researchy areas in Montreal in their studios there but I'm just like okay I'm taking your word for it because <laughs> the historical accuracy in that game sums up why, the, what their emphasis were mm -hmm. and they were more inclined to be historically accurate than actually just make it fun which later games kind of throw out the window you can have a Pegasus as your horse in Assassin's Creed Odyssey because it's Assassin's in the Animus Creed... you can do whatever like, exactly that's their, their, you know that's the excuse that they realise that they're allowed to use <laughs> Look, we've got this thing, let's utilise it. By the way guys, it's a video game, it's so a video game. it yeah. can be fun. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't think when it was Assassin's 3 they'd quite figured that out yet. No. And actually 4, the next one that came out, after 3 mysteriously, 3, mm -hmm. 4. The pirate one, yeah. which everyone loves because you just get to be a pirate. Because it's pirate, fun. Yeah. I think they found the yeah. fun in four, but three. And then also, even the bits when you're on land, they made all the islands like these tall, rocky, craggy looking things that you could climb up. Yeah. It was great. Also, um, Assassin's 3 was one of the last games where they really stretched the formula of Assassin's Creed. When 4 came along, it was so much to do with naval gameplay and being mm. a pirate. You could kind of forgive all of that. 3 was very much still, I'm following a guy, I'm mm -hmm. going to stab him. I'm trying not to be detected. I'm going over some rooftops. I'm still following the guy. By that point, something you'd done for five games. Yeah. And it really started to show. I understand wanting to be historically accurate. And I know that they have done that in other games, but give him something more to do than climb trees. Taller buildings. <laughs> it's just slightly taller buildings. That's all it needed. All it needed. And Connor would have been more exciting to play as, and then we would have liked him more. Maybe. He'd have had more fun jumping off buildings. Yeah, he would have had more fun doing the Maybe he'd have even cracked guys. a smile. Yeah. Oh, I want to give him a hug, I guess. Now, we've been complaining about like the vast wide open spaces and like everything being low and flat and wide. But like Assassin's Creed Origins came out and it's got a desert in it. And that's still fun though. <laughs> yeah, apart from the sort of 10 pyramids there in the game, everything yeah. else is very flat but I think they've figured it out now. The two cities in Assassin's 3 were pretty much the same. They looked yeah. very, very similar. Well, because they were. They were colonial yeah. America and they didn't really do much else with it. Whereas in Odyssey, at least, you have entire regions. You have mountains, you have deserts, yeah. you have woodlands, you have valleys, you have streams and water and ships and seas and yeah. caves and forts and... It's, it's the variation. Like, Assassin's Creed 3 was the stepping stone to those games. Yeah, I'm glad it exists as a way to open up the series, which was previously pretty much all about just city-based gameplay. Mm -hmm. One had the kingdom. There were some more open bits in two. Everybody loved Rome because it made the city... It's never really been toppled. Like, no. that version of Rome is the best city they've ever done. And after that, everything else pales in comparison. Yeah, like, even... I, I absolutely love the London that they did in Syndicate. Like, as a Londoner, I'm walking around and they're going, oh my god, they did it. It's cool party, <laughs> mate! <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> it looks just the same in real life, doesn't it? Less scaffolding on Big Ben. <laughs> Big yeah. Ben's actually the bell, the bell, not the tower. It's actually the Queen Elizabeth Tower. <laughs> Queen you were discussing tower. this the other day. Yeah. I couldn't help but shout <laughs> over. Cool, yeah. blimey, look at those horses. They're just like the ones in London now. Yeah. Who's a good horse? You are. You do actually see carriages in London sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like even though I absolutely adored Syndicate London, Rome was just so good in the Ezio series. It was just so Yeah, well it was done. that sense of virtual tourism. Yeah. You were going somewhere that you really wanted to go. Venice in AC2 was the same thing. Oh my goodness, yeah. Like I um I watched a, a travel show once after having played Assassin's Creed 2 and they showed one of the squares. And I was just like, I've been there. no, I've not been there, I went there in a video game. <laughs> 
but like they're so good at that. It's because of something that you can look at yeah. and relate to, whereas in Assassin's Creed 3 they didn't have that. Yeah, it goes back to those cities not being the ones that you know today. Yeah. Great, I get to go to New York, but I get to go to the crappy sort of wooden mm. sticks and mud version yeah. that no one recognises or wants to go to. There's no tourism there, really. No. Are you all right? What do you think? How did this happen? Poachers in the woods. I asked them to leave. This was their answer. Come on. We need to get that arm looked at. What if the men who did this? They can wait. Your wound cannot. Another problem. Another for poor, one. For poor old Connor and why we're, you know, too harsh on him. Some of the best, most humanizing missions for him were the homestead missions, and they were all entirely optional, and you could miss them. <laughs> so yeah. you miss all that character development. Connor, what are you doing? Those poachers need to be stopped. I saw the scabs from my hunting blind. Get to that, and you shouldn't have any trouble finding them. Use the rope dart if you can. Get familiar with it. The homestead was one of my favourite things in 3 that has just never reappeared. Yeah! I love when you have a secret base in games. I like that And as well. the homestead in AC3, for people who haven't played it, is your little village yeah, that grew yeah, as you did. Yeah, it was so and cute. And you could add people to it. Yeah. And just meeting all of those people, it was so much fun. I just can't believe it was optional. So I was speaking recently with Alex Hutchinson, the AC3 director, and he said one of the things he would change in AC3 is that he would make them part of the main narrative yeah. path. Because yeah. there's so much good stuff there and you can just Really completely good. ignore it. Well, first off, you can miss it if you don't find the characters in the world, because that's how you recruited them. Yeah. They would only be in that area for a certain timeline. Because it's spread over however many years, they'll only be there for like one year in story time. And then the second time you could miss it is you could get them into the homestead, but certain missions that they would provide would only pop up at certain times throughout the story. So if you just blasted your way through the story and didn't do the side missions and thought, oh, I'll pick those all up on the end. And that's sort of a little bit what I did, which is why I played this game twice. Because I was like, I want the Homestead mission achievement. <laughs> I want that achievement. I also want to know all of this gameplay that I've missed. And I went back and replayed it and I was like, ah, Connor's not as annoying. He did, at points, crack a smile. There's a bit where he walks someone down the aisle at their wedding. Oh, and you're yeah. just like, oh. Connor. You get to see this whole other side to him and, and him growing a community around him which is as close to a family as he really gets yeah. in the game. Him being sort of the protector of this group of people gives his character such a well-rounded sense of, well just progression through the story because yeah. at the beginning of the game his village is burned down, he loses all the people around him and then through the course of the game as you recruit these characters you build a community back up around you and act as sort of the protector of it. It's great and yeah. if you can miss this stuff. Ellen and Maria are free of you. I say so. The people behind me say so. Believe me when I tell you, if I ever see you on this land again, I will end you. And also, if you don't collect everyone, then a sad thing happens and not everyone is there to be sad about it. Oh no, yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, like, I do. It's basically, it can change how many people miss someone. <sighs> are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I just remember the, the, the sad thing. Anyway, um, the, other, the other thing as well is that some of the optional side missions are the ship missions. Yeah, they're great. And they sort of act as uh, an introduction to AC4. Yeah. You can see that they've been building the systems for the, all the fun ship stuff. Yeah. It's a shame because when you come across the ship missions in the main game, you, you've got this here because this battle happened by the sea. Mm. And so for story purposes, we're going to do this. But then you, they put in a load of side missions, evidently because they're like, we built this whole system. Let's use it. Also, so, we're making that other game about ships. Yeah, so like, we have this stuff just lying around. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to do more ship stuff? Okay, it's on the map. <laughs> but you really don't need to. Yeah. And then it's like, wow, this is it's, really fun. It's really they should fun make stuff. a whole game about this. Mm, yeah, yeah. No, note to uh, <laughs> Ubisoft, you should make a whole Assassin's Creed game with a, a, a ship. That would be good. You have this salty first mate. The Assassin's Creed games, when they do sailing, they always have like a really sort of grizzled old Yeah, it's like Cassandra. Dude, your Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas, who's like... Mm, he's very Barnabas. much like that. In uh, AC4, you have Adewale. Yeah, he's, he's less grizzled, but still sort of just like... Yeah. And it's the same in AC3 as well. No, 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 no. Not the left foot. Never the left foot. Horrible look. Step with your right foot first. 
and it's all about finding treasures and stuff. So you have all these optional like finding treasures. And it's really good because you go to these like unique islands and you go through a set puzzle and then you get a thing at the end and you take it back to this drunk pirate who's like... Ugh. And it's so it's such a palette cleanser from all of the stuff we were talking about, you know, going yeah. around these really flat cities, being able to go to the homestead, being able to do some naval missions. Mm -hmm. If only the game had been structured in a way that these were sort of more part of what you would do as you were going through the game rather yeah. than just being encouraged to, like, you would finish the story. Yeah. Of course you would, because you want to see what happens to yeah. Connor. You want to see if he finally cracks his smile. Yeah. He never does. <laughs> Also, an optional thing, which I don't know why anyone sees it as optional, because it's default for me when I play. He's really friendly to all the animals. He's really thoughtful. He sees the cats and they rub up against his leg and they're like, Brow! and he's cute. And then also <laughs> he pets the dogs. It's really cute. Yeah. And you can feed pigs and turkeys, maybe goats. I can't remember. He's very, you know. I think culturally he's been raised to respect animals. Yeah. And like, because he does kill animals in the hunting, but it's always for a reason. Yeah. He makes peace with the fact that he's killed them for a reason while yeah. he's doing with it. And he's also very nice to dogs. I think it's the first time in the series that you can do that. You can do yeah. it in later games. I think that was the first. Yeah, we, we, d we did a whole video on the times that cats and dogs could be petted or not. It was brought in in this game. Came in and out and in and out. In Syndicate, you can't say hi to the cats. Worst game in the series. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. AC3 is the worst game in the series, but... Aww. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And AC3 has the turkey. The assassin's oh, yeah. turkey. Yeah, yeah. The little Easter egg. There's a little turkey for an assassin's hood. <laughs> Yes, exactly like that. I'm not going to do a turkey <laughs> impression. Can you do a turkey impression? Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's it. They're a bit more panicked in this game. Well, yeah, because you're standing up against the guy with blades <laughs> up his sleeves. Connor is, you know, a very caring human being who's kind of just popped in this world of war and torment and has to deal with a load of stuff and then isn't allowed to crack a single joke to try and, you know, I often put a little bit of uh, humour when we're dealing with bad situations to, you know, if you don't laugh, you cry. Yeah. But that's not been applied with Connor at all. So he's just sad all the time and that's a shame. So those are a few of the reasons why Connor kind of gets a bad rap. Nice guy. Probably not the best assassin. I'd live in his town. I live in his I town. Would, I would totally be his neighbour. I would be his friend. I'd pop round. I'd see his chickens. But as the guy who's on the front cover of your box for a video game, there have been better ones. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he just needed to be given more to do in terms of making it his decision to do things. <laughs> Rather than just go da, 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 da. all horizontally. I think well, like lying down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just floating or rolling along. What? There's not much verticality in the game. Oh. As we were speaking of. I thought you just meant so. he needs to like just lie down just and chill out a little bit. Yeah. You gotta take some time for yourself, mate. You're allowed go to away, switch off for you know, a bit. Come back. Go on holiday. Go off on your ship. Go have a nice time. I'd have played that DLC, Connor's Holiday, where you get like the. We're all going on a. On a holiday. holiday. <laughs> I like it. He the is lads. a likeable character. Down in. Once you actually get to see his character. So. Down yeah. in Jamaica. We yeah. just pop down there. And that could be the founding of Assassin's Creed 4, which yeah. is set down in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pitch it. He's the grandson. He's the grandson. Yeah. So he goes down and he finds stuff about Edward and then he goes on an adventure finding out about his grandfather. We're a bit harsh on him sometimes, but hopefully we have answered. The question as to why he's, you know, often not given the best. Not the cheeriest you know. chappy. Yeah, not the but cheeriest you, but chappy. But you wouldn't be not, either. No. I wouldn't be. No. He's dealt a bad hand. Just do the homestead missions and then you'll like him. It's fine. It's fine. And but the holiday DLC. And the holiday DLC that we want Ubisoft to make immediately now. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me on thank the sofa. You. Some interesting insights to Assassin's Creed in the mind of Tom Phillips. Go check out his work on the Eurek. Go check out her. Oh, you're already watching. You're already it. here. Yeah, you're fine. If you want to know more about Assassin's Creed, then you should totally subscribe because I will never shut up about those games. I'm really sorry, Luke. You're stuck with me Bye. making loads of Assassin's Creed videos. It gets easier with time. Yeah, yeah. So subscribe and hit that bell button so you can be notified of all the delicious Assassin's Creed news. Num, 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 num. And also, uh, you, there's some videos here to get you started. And uh, yeah, let us know in the comments below, as said before. And uh, see you next time. Bye. Sorry, Connor. <laughs>